Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that was so my this, this Sunday is a little weird. Don't worry, we're not starting yet. We've got 10 more minutes. So feel free to keep talking. But today, we're doing a little family style. So we're going to have kids in here, students in here, us grown-ups in here. So we thought before we start, instead of just sitting staring at each other, let's play a game. We like games. We like games. I'm Brandon. This is Evan. Hello. So we're going to play a little game, Fact or Fiction, Back to School Edition. We're going to test your knowledge. How it's going to work, we're going to put a statement on the screen, then we're all going to vote if we think it's a fact or if it's fiction. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. I heard a yay. You're my friend. Whoever that was. Yeah. <laughs> Woo -hoo. All right. So, Evan, why don't you go ahead and read the first one? 8.8 billion will be spent on back to school clothes in the U.S. this year. Billion. Billion with a B. Billion. Billion. Yeah. All right, that's a lot. I, uh, yeah, that that's, is, that's a lot of dollars, man. Yeah, that's a lot. All right, let's see who's we're going to vote. Who thinks that is a fact? Eight points, a very exact number. 8.8 .8 billion. All right, we're getting mostly facts here. Come on in, guys. We're just playing a game. Come on in, find a seat. We're going to keep playing. All right, who thinks that is a fiction? No, that's too specific. Can't be true. All right. Got some split households. This will be fun. All right. Uh, Cody, what's the answer? Fact. It is fact. Woo. I'm sorry. What do you know? Fact. Were you guessing fact? It. I thought that was fiction. I was wrong. All right. Show us the next one. Crayola produces nearly 3 billion crayons each year. Crayola, nearly 3 billion. That's a lot. Who thinks they have about 3 billion crayons in their couch? Like, that's our house. They're all there. All right, uh, for those of you that are just coming in, we're just playing a little game as we wait to get started this morning. We're playing Fact or Fiction, Back to School Edition. Who thinks fact? There are, what was it? Three billion Crayola are made every year. Okay, okay. Who thinks that's fiction? All right, those of you that are saying fiction, do you think it is higher or lower? Give me just a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Higher, 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 so lower. All right, interesting. All right, let's see what's the answer. Fact. It is fact. Woo! We are learning stuff today. Isn't this fun? All right, next one. It'll be on Jeopardy one day. Go ahead, Evan, read this one. Before erasers were invented, the best way to erase graphite was with a rolled up piece of white bread? Interesting. Not wheat bread. White Not bread. French bread. What's your favorite kind of bread? Anybody got a favorite? Yell a it out. Tough topic. Anybody? Nobody? No bread? All right, who's thinking this is? Fact. The best way to erase things was bread. Okay. You know what? That's I, so I weird. It has to be fact. fact. I'm guessing fact. If somebody made that up, then. You know what I mean, right, who's them. saying fiction? There had to be erasers back then, or the best way was like just pick up a kid and use their head. <laughs> we all know that one is that, kid. Is that how you teach you your know? kids? I was that one kid. Um, I, was, I was that kid. Cody, what's the answer? It is fact. <laughs> Are these all fact? I guess, who maybe. Picked this, who picked this game? <laughs> all right, anybody got all three of them right so far? Anybody? Perfect. Extra points. All right, next one. In the US, 92 million students carry backpacks. 92 million? 92. What do the other ones do? Does not have like a briefcase? I, you well, know like, what? Actually, I did go to high school with someone and he used a briefcase. Well, third grader walking in with a briefcase and a suit, three piece suit? Yeah, right. absolutely. He did it. All right, facts, 92 million, whatever was on the screen, 92, yep, 92 million, million, that's a fact. Okay, we got some facts. Who thinks fiction? There's no way that number's correct. Okay, a lot of fiction. We got more fiction for this one. What's the answer? Fiction. I mean, we had to have a fiction. That's we had, a lot. We had three facts in a row. It had to be a fiction. It's it 79 sense. million. There you it go. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. All right, next question. Number five. Why don't you read this one? A pencil can write 45,000 words or draw a line 35 miles long. Is this a number two pencil? <laughs> it matters. Uh, this is pre-sharpened, like, just like, just like, like hey. All right, who's going, um, fact, that however many words are three, well, how long was it? 35, that's a long way, 35 miles, who can write a draw a line 35, who thinks that's like a fact? from here to, like, Ann Arbor. Fact, okay. Fiction. All right, we're I pretty split on this one. I'm going fiction. I don't think I think that's fiction we haven't seen too, these yet. But like, what are you thinking, Evan? 
I, I think fiction, you know, I, I don't know. It's weird. Fiction. Those are too exact of numbers. Answer. Fact. It is fact. There you oh, go. Wow. There you, you go. Dumb. We're bad at this, Evan. We're, Absolutely. We're bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we don't know much. All right, let's go with the next one. Make Go ahead, read it. All right. It would take approximately... That's a big number. That is a really big number. It's a lot of pressure, That's, that's very scary. 506,880,000 of the <laughs> two-inch, seven-eighths post-it notes to circle the world once. I can once. hear Alan laughing at you. That was, that was a lot. <laughs> Dude, reading is Any not math my teachers in here, do you get those numbers right? Because I don't know. Yeah? All right. I don't even know what Evan just read, but who thinks that's a fact? <laughs> All right, who thinks that's fiction or they just got lost while Evan was reading and think it's fiction? That's, I, I'm going I fiction. I it's fake because that makes fiction. me feel What better. was it about? Post-it notes? Yeah. Dude, so Scott, Pastor Scott has that many post-it notes at his house Ooh. alone. It's like Too many. walls of post-its. All right, fact or fiction, what's the answer? Fact. Fact. That's Wonderful. a lot of post-its. A lot of post-it notes. I wonder what it says. All right, for those of you that are just coming in, we're just playing a little game as we get started out. We're having a little... Fun, extra fun Sunday. We have our kids, everybody in here, combined family service. And we're going to play a little game as we get started out. Next question. You can sharpen the blades on a pencil sharpener by simply wrapping up your pencils in aluminum foil before inserting them. I don't know if this is fact or fiction, but I'm definitely trying it when I get home. No. Please Definitely drying don't, it. Don't, and then no, putting no, it in the microwave. Them. What? We have no, students do here, Brandon. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Um, sharpen your pencil sharpener. Aluminum foil. All right. Um, some of you are probably smart. Who thinks this is fact? Okay. Who thinks this is fiction? I feel like this is a great way to start a fire. Uh, I mean, a pencil sharpener? Well, yeah, because uh, there's, the, <laughs> there's the pencil shavings in it, too. Is it an electric one? Yeah. Electric? I don't know. All right. Um... I forgot what we're doing. What's the answer? <laughs> fact! Fact! There you go. All of you guys with Still dull pencil it, sharpeners. Still don't want to try it. That sounds dangerous. Now you know. Ooh. The more you know. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Next question, Cody. Before paper clips, melted, melted wax was used to hold sheets of paper together. Never mind, everybody. This is spoiled. Sunshine <laughs> says it's true. This is... <laughs> it's true. Melted wax to hold... But, I'm not a smart person. How do you get them apart if they're... You seal it. You seal it, and then it's just like a permanent staple? You warm it up. You warm it up first? Oh, so you guys are so smart. Then, then it gets melted again, the you paper pull them back apart. Fire. I was that kid that always forgot, like, a, the staples, and so I was just, like, ripping my paper to, like, make my own, and it never sees get degrees. All right, what's, uh, let's see. Before paper clips, who thinks this is a fact? Melted wax. Who agrees with sunshine? <laughs> Who thinks fiction, no way, where people are dropping wax on their paper? All right, we're pretty split on this one. Let's see, what's the answer? Fact or fiction? Ah! Thread and fiction! needle. That thread actually makes needle. a lot more sense. Better question, which one's more dangerous? Kids with thread and needle or kids with melted wax? I don't think kids were allowed to handle paper back then. I don't know. I, just, I don't know. What? Kids... Parchment. I don't know. All right. Uh, how many we got more? That's we got. What you use when we got you're two kid, more. Right? Perfect. All right. Let's go do this quickly. Fact or fiction? Play-Doh was originally carpet cleaner. Anybody ever had their kids get a bunch of Play-Doh in the carpet? Did it help clean it afterwards? I don't think so. All right. Let's see. Fact or fiction? Who thinks this is a fact? We got we got a couple votes. This one is also so weird that like it has to be real, right? Right. Like, who's like? Make it into carpet cleaner. All right, fact. Who thinks this is fiction? No way. Play-Doh was originally designed to be peanut butter. Okay, good. Answer? Fiction. Wallpaper cleaner. What? Are you supposed to clean wallpaper? I, I don't know. I don't have it in my house. So is, that, is that a thing? We got that rid of thing? that years ago. All right, last one. Last. This one's worth 1,000 points. So if you're behind, you can catch up here. Last one. Just Good kidding. <laughs> Bye. <clears throat> Just kidding, not the last one. You know, I was uh, back there listening, and I wonder if I put tinfoil on my head, would it sharpen my intelligence? <laughs> uh, I have to spin it? I don't know. I don't want to do that. Hey, welcome to Crossroads. Really glad you guys are here today. As you can see, today's going to be a little bit different. 
a lot different. We're going to have a lot of fun today, and it's okay to have fun in church, right? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Somebody said yeah, so you people up there need to say yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> if you're online... Um, you're missing an awesome day? No, you're not. You're going to watch it. Anyway, hey, we're glad to have you guys with us. All our resources for today are on our website, alumnichurch.org. They're on our app, C3 uh, Crossroads app. Uh, let's see. Oh, YouTube. You could be on YouTube right now, and if you are, if you click, uh, please click subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of future streams, and our information is there as well. We have Lynn Olson on the chat. So if you guys are home, please, please hit her up. Just any message, any crazy questions, because we're going to have crazy questions apparently today. So hit her with a crazy question. That would be awesome. She'd love to hear from you guys. That lets her know that you're out there. And um, anyway, we're going to have a great day at Crossroads, and we're going to have a lot of fun today at Crossroads. And uh, so let's go. Hello everyone. So every week I call my friend Wally and we talk about life and we talk about the Bible. So why don't we go ahead and give him a call? Well, hello Brandon and hello to all of you kids. Hello kids. Hey Wally, what's up? Hey Wally, say hello to all the grown-ups. Uh, well, uh, um, the the who? The who and the what? What now? Well, you know, the, the grown-ups of church. Uh, today we are doing a combined service, so it's all of the adults, all of the kids. We're, we're, we're all together. Wow! 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 The Lulu Brandon! You, you mean all of the old D's are watching us right now? Well, well I mean, I'm not sure about old D's. Oh boy, Brandon! I don't... Are you sure all of the oldies, as you call them, are you sure they can handle this? What? I, I, I didn't call them oldies. Because, Brandon, let's be much honesty here. Sometimes you are pretty weird. Most of the time, you are weird. I think these oldies might need some help. Wait, I'm the weird one? Um, and, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we all need help. You know, I think the grown-ups at Crossroads can handle one church service where we do some of the things we do in Kid Crossing and in Jolt. <laughs> well, you should know. I mean, kids, he is one of the oldies, isn't he? What, what was that? Well, Brandon, you know that we always start with the kids in groups. Like little herds of guinea pigs across the great plains of the Serengeti. Wally, I don't think that... But how would we herd all of the oldies into their groups? Wally, they aren't oldies. Okay, you know what? I think they will be okay with our icebreaker. Icebreaker? I... Ice... Breakage? Do you mean we are... <laughs> Finally going to go to the Antarctic and break the ice where those dreaded penguins live? Angry little birds. No, Wally, no. Uh, you know, in family ministry, we want to be a place where you belong. And you can't be a place where you belong until you know some people. So we want to do something to help everyone get to know each other. Oh, like the cheetahs and the dogs at the zoo. Uh, yeah, actually, um... So, we're going to do the same thing today, and it might be a little uncomfortable. That's okay. All right, but I, I still don't know where this ice is that we are breaking. Wally, it means we're going to ask a question so people can get to know each other a little better. With ice? I'm lost and confused. Oh, Wally. Oh, Wally. All right, so this might be a little different, might be a little uncomfortable, but that's okay. Just lean into it. Um, we start every service we do with family ministry by trying to get to know each other better. In Jolt, we say we want to connect with other students. Kid Crossing, we say we want to have some really good church friends. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask a couple of questions. Those of you online, just type your answers in the chat. Talk to the people around you, wherever you are. 
those of you here in person, just lean over to whoever's next to you, answer the question. We're going to go fast. All right? We ready? Question number one. If you could have an endless supply of any food, what food would it be? I'm going to give you like 15, 20 seconds. Answer to the question. Ready? Go. Any food. Endless supply. Good answer. All right. Five seconds. All right. Per Ooh, I just heard mac and cheese pizza. That sounds amazing. All right. Um, just yell out a couple of your answers. I'm just... I heard the correct answer. Somebody said bacon. So we can move on. All right. Good. Bacon is the correct answer. There's no correct answer. Also, bacon is the correct answer. All right. Next question. If you could be any animal, what animal would you want to be? Any animal. Ready? Go. I don't think bacon works for this answer. No. Maybe it does. I don't know. All right, five seconds. All right, perfect. Yell out a couple. Let me just hear just a couple answers. What? Oh, ooh. You guys are so smart. Wolverine. That's the correct answer. There's no correct answer. Also, Wolverine is the correct answer. All right, last question. If you could instantly gain one skill, one skill, like Matrix style, where it just gets downloaded to your brain, what skill would you want to learn? Ready? Go! What? That's good, that's good. All right, five seconds. All right, yell out some of your answers. What skills do you want to learn? Perfect. I don't think I heard any of those. Zoe, what do you want to learn? Yeah. Perfect. Roller skating. All right, Mike, go ahead and stand up with us. We're going to spend some time worshiping Jesus. running high to bring the broken back to life only you can only you can you set me free from every chain you fill my heart with songs of praise only you can only you can jesus you're the only reason that i'm even breathing i am wide awake Every beat is calling out your name. You left the glory of your throne to bring this run away back home. Only you can, only you can. You give me love, you give me life, you keep me dancing through the night. Oh! 
calling, every beat is calling out your name. You guys go ahead and have a seat. So any of you that know Evan or I, Evan is our Jolt director. Any of you that know Evan or I know that anytime we do anything, we like to have a lot of fun. Absolutely. And that means we usually like to play games. Yep. So, so we're going to play a game. Yep. Today the game is Face Booty Awesome Summer Edition. Summer Edition. We went back to school this week, last week, and so we're still feeling that like, oh, I want summer. So we're going to play the Summer Edition. Yeah. Yeah. Reminisce, no. right? So, we do have just a little instructions. So, all you have to do is watch these clips uh, and then guess if they hit their face, 
So you'll say face, falls on their booty, which then you'll say booty, or it's flat out awesome, in which you say awesome. Sound good, you guys? Pretty simple. Right. Cody, play the first clip. All right, so you're going to face plant, booty, or do something awesome. Perfect. All right, let's see the answer. Ooh. Ouch. Everybody's got that uncle. You know what I mean? That like, everybody's got that uncle. Oh, it's a great idea. Put the trampoline by the pool. No, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Do it with video. Anyways, Evan, make me stop talking. It's just... Ooh, this is a little tougher. All right. Who thinks face? He's going to face plant. Who thinks he's about to fall on his booty? I think it's, I think it's awesome. Who thinks he's going to do something awesome? Oh, awesome. all right. We're going awesome. Surfer, surfer dudes are awesome, dude. Kind of awesome too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe both. Maybe both. Maybe both. That was pretty uh, miraculous. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next one, Cody. <laughs> the royal flush. That sounds like a terrible idea. All right. Uh, <laughs> face. <laughs> Booty. <laughs> Mostly. All right. Perfect and awesome. Anybody got a couple of awesome votes? I think you guys, it's gonna be awesome. You guys are optimistic. Yes. These rarely are awesome. <laughs> I love how you can hear the groans beforehand. Like, yeah. oh, we know what's coming. Oh. And that's not like just the booty, that's like back too. That was, Ooh. that was bad. Just next, right. next video. Next, next, video. next, that one, was next bad. I see no way this could end poorly. Face. face, do we even need to vote? Are we all just going face? Face. face. All right, people online, I've got to tell you guys, I'll just type in your answers as well. Answer. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on, like, what was the plan here? <laughs> what was this other guy, like, was the plan for him to jump over him? I, I don't, Lord, jump onto him, maybe? Ju like, use him as the surfboard? Like, that'd be pretty cool. That, that, was, would, that would make it that awesome. That was some poor planning. They must be from Ohio. <laughs> Next one. Ooh. Face. Face. Booty. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, that we're looks pretty, awesome, we're, guys. We're pretty split on this one. Let's see. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was right. that was awesome. That was we, really cool. We got enough summer left that I expect at least five of you to do this and send me a video. Me, you, you, you people I'm looking at right now, you know, right? You know. Facebook is great, guys. Make sure <laughs> next, to tag Crossroads. Next one. Face. face. That's well out of face. Who's voting face? I think, I think it's going to be face. Awesome. We're pretty split on this one. I think we had more, more awesome. I'm going face, I think, this one. I'm over. <laughs> Nice! Wow. I do not want to see you guys try that one. I know you, I know you guys Unless too you well. can. Unless you think you can. Nope. nope. Impossible. Next one. Do it. Aww. <laughs> this one has to end awesome, right? Or else we're bad people? <laughs> Don't say yes, because it's probably not going to be awesome. All right. Face. Booty. I'm thinking booty. Awesome. Who's really hoping it's not awesome? Like, who's, who's, you can admit it. It goes, okay, this is jerk. You're to be perfect. I know that one. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's see the answer. All right, we're good people. We're good people. So, Cody, how many more we got? All right, this will be the last one. I think this is the last one. Ooh. Oh. 
we're short, short beginning. There's not much evidence Very here. Short. There's not much. There's not. All right, lot, this one's a worth a thousand points. Who thinks face? Who thinks we're gonna end with a booty? That's just a weird sentence to say in church. Who, th who thinks it's gonna be awesome? How many think it's gonna be all three? Wow, you guys are optimistic. Oh, all right, hold on, we gotta do that again. Watch the dad in the top. This is the best, the best. We'll do it again. Play that video again. Oh, but he's like happy. That's like, a, oh but I'm so happy at the same time. That's a good dad. That's a good dad. All right. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm worried about doing a face plan off this stage. I, I often think of that, you know, because I'm not like the most graceful person. I got some bad knees, huh? Step back. Wow, awesome. Okay. <laughs> now I'll just do a belly flop and then flop over. Anyway, hey, um, in a minute I'm going to be praying for offering, so um, get ready for that. Um, you know, I didn't mention earlier today that it's Labor Day uh, today, so let's give a little applause for the workers of the world. Um, yeah. I was a worker bee for a long time, now I'm retired. So anyway, and so in the 24th and 25th of September, we're going to be building a ramp here in Lenawee County. I mentioned a couple weeks ago, if you have any interest in doing that, just contact a church office or go on connect at crossroads.org and um, uh, just in, in Indicate if you'd like to be part of that. And if you do want to be part of that, you don't have to have carpenter skills. I see somebody sitting right out here that he thinks he's got carpenter skills, but he doesn't. But he helps with the ramps, and he's good with it anyway. And so we can help you. Any hands, doesn't matter. Man, woman, really, it doesn't matter. So if it's something you think you might want to be part of, uh, just do that, please. That would be awesome. So if you're online, uh, you're here first time, uh, don't feel obligated to give. Let today's... Uh, fun and games be uh, a gift to you. Uh, and if you want to jump in with us on, and give, that would be awesome. So how do you do that? So you can go to text your gift to 517-200-3972. I'm sharpened my brain with the tinfoil back there. I'm getting better. Uh, we also have this, uh, I say, handsome black box over here. If you're live, you can drop it in there. You can also use the kiosk in the vestibule out here and um, use sanitizer before you use it, if you would, please. And if you want to get out that pirate booty and, and send that our way, that'd be awesome. Anybody got any pirate booty? So I just, I'm like those guys. I want to say booty in church and get away with it. So anyway, <laughs> never thought you'd hear me say that, did you? No, there's a lot of things. Never mind. We don't want to go there. So if none of that's attractive, you guys at all, if, um, you know, online or whatever, you can mail your tithe or offering to um, Post Office Box 946, Adrian, Michigan, 49221. And if I got you totally confused, just call the church office at 266-1919. It would be happy to help you out all the way there. So if you would please bow your heads, that would be awesome. Grace Only Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for today. We ask you to bless every gift, every giver, multiply it, and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen? amen. So I have some of the best kids ever. Uh, thankfully, they take after their mother. And I was this week, we went down, my little sister had, uh, had a baby, and she's this little baby, and so we went down to Indiana to visit them, and it was just like, just brought back all of those feels and those memories from when our kids were first born, and just the little, the baby, and they can't do anything except look at you and then cry and, you know, do the other stuff, and it's just like, little baby, and they're so cute and cuddly and amazing and helpless, right? It's like, man, they can't do anything. They're just completely helpless. And it just got me thinking and remembering that story when you know, our oldest, the first time we, you know, when he was born and going to the hospital and just like the craziness, 
right? Like it was just crazy and there's all of this screaming and there's people coming in and out and you know I I read the baby okay I perused some of okay we had baby books on the shelf so I was somewhat prepared I had no idea what was going on it was so overwhelming and it was so scary and then at the end of it we had this baby this little helpless baby the second most helpless thing in the world is that little baby infant the most helpless thing in the world is a first-time parent of an infant. We had no idea. And then all of a sudden, they're like, okay, here you go. Go home. And we're like, I look at my wife, Keisha. I was like, do they know us? Like, they're, they're sending this home with, are they sure? I'm like, what? Fast forward 18 months, and we're having our second. And this one, like, I thought I was going to be ready. I was going to be prepared. We, were, we just went through this. It seemed very recent for us still. But it was completely, completely different and so scary. See, our, our second, Dempsey, she came early. And I skipped that chapter of the baby book when I didn't read it. So I had no idea what was going on. I didn't know, okay, is this like early, no big deal, she's fine, we're just, it's just a big deal. Or is this like, we're going to be in some serious trouble, she's early, and we're at the hospital, so we were in the hospital in the delivery room, which is just this craziest place on earth, and there's all these extra doctors, and they're coming in and out, and uh, we were at UT, and so they had all these like students coming in to watch because this was kind of a rare thing, I guess, I don't know, so it's just like all these people, and just so chaotic, and they're screaming, and there's just doctors, and it's like, ah, what's going on? And all of a sudden, our baby comes out, and I'm terrified. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know if she's okay. I don't know if she's not okay. And as soon as, she, yeah, as soon as Dempsey comes out, all of a sudden this whole other set of doctors comes like flooding into the room. And I don't know what to do. I'm like, do I stay like with my wife who just went through something crazy and traumatic? And I'm so proud of her. And I love her. And I want to be there for her. But also they're taking my newborn baby, this little child, and they're taking her and they put her in this little incubation pod thing and they're wheeling her away. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know what to do. I was scared. I was overwhelmed. I felt helpless. I just felt just... All of the things. And I don't know if it was Keisha. I don't know if it was Holy Spirit. I don't know if it was a nurse. I don't know if it was a talking squirrel. But something said, go with, your, go with the baby. Just go, go with the baby. So I'm just like, okay. So I'm just going. I'm trying to like walk next to this pod thing. And they're hooking all these wires and different stuff up to her. And I'm just crazy overwhelmed. And finally, like, we get to this other room. And their nurses, they got all this stuff hooked up onto her. I'm just like standing there. My eyes are probably like this big. I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And finally, the nurse just comes over, gently puts her hand on my shoulder. And she's like, Dad, it's going to be okay. She's like, oh, are you sure? Because this is crazy. She's like, it's going to be okay. So you can't hold her yet, um, but you can, a little, you know, in the incubation tube, you can like, stick your hand in. So you can stick your hand and you can at least, like, touch her. Like, it's going to be okay. And just, I will never forget that feeling of just being helpless. That's my job. I'm dad. I, my job is to help and to be there and to protect and all those things. And in that moment, there was nothing I could do. I was helpless. And the band's going to come back out. We're going to do another song. And this song is about as the world shakes, shakes, and the world break, breaks. Girls, you can come on up too. Um, God, you are my rock. You are my everything. And as we do this song, we, as you can see, we're going to have some extra awesome, cute helpers up here. So we're going to do some motions. And we're going to have a lot of fun with it. As we do this song, I want this to be your, your prayer. Not just a song we sing, not just some really cute kids up here on the stage. Oh, they are very cute. But make that your prayer. God, as the world shakes... As things break, you are my rock. You are my strength. Would you stand and sing with us? Following Jesus. 
Chicken nuggets, it's me. <sighs> Carl. Welcome to Google TV. Welcome to Google TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to TV. Well, hey there, everyone. <sighs> well, I'm not going to lie. Today I'm feeling pretty down. A lack of motivation. I don't feel like doing anything. <sighs> it's the worst. I guess we'll do some crafts or something, like make a paper airplane. So let's get to it. <sighs> All right. The perfect airplane. <sighs> Who am I kidding? It's horrible. <phone rings> Looks like I'm getting a call. Hello? Carl, what's going on, my man? <sighs> Not great, TJ. Uh, oh, no, man, what's wrong? I don't know. I'm just dragging, feeling really unmotivated, like an elephant sitting on my head. 
and then a boulder bouncing on the elephant's head, making it impossible for me to move. Wow, man, that sounds pretty rough, Carl. Tell me about it. I haven't felt this bad since my peanut butter and jelly sandwich fell into the sand at the beach. Well, I'm sorry, Carl. Is it safe to say you're feeling pretty helpless? <sighs> TJ, if I could use three words to describe how I'm feeling right now, it'll be these. Helpless, defeated, distraught. Sadness, melancholy, impotent, weak, and vulnerable, also gassy. You know, Carl, there's a story that I think will lift your spirits. Well, TJ, unless you have a box of jelly-filled donuts, I don't think anything can make me feel better. Well, let's see. You heard of Moses, right? Of course. Well, when Moses was a baby, Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt, realized that there were too many Israelites. So he came up with a horrible plan. No. Yeah. He decided that every Israelite boy would be thrown into the river. That's awful. It was, man. Moses' mother got to a place where she couldn't hide him anymore. So she got a basket, made it to where it wouldn't sink, and she put Moses in the basket and put it in a river. So baby Moses was safe? For now. But Moses' sister watched him float for a bit just to see what would happen. And what happened? Well, a princess of Egypt came to the river to take a bath and saw the baby. She asked for her servant to get the baby. And when she did, Moses' sister came out to ask the princess if she would need help raising the baby. Well, what did the princess say? She said yes. So she gave the baby back to the sister to give to the mother to, in order to take care of the baby. And get this, she even paid the mother to take care of him. <laughs> That's crazy. She saved Moses' life. Yes, she did. But someone else helped baby Moses even more. Well, who? God. God? Moses was supposed to be thrown into the river, but God had a plan for Moses. And God knew that Moses, being a baby, was pretty helpless floating down the river. Well, he sure was. And God helped him by sending others, pulling him out by the river, and making sure he was taken care of. You're absolutely right, Carl. And today you woke up feeling tired and pretty defeated, right? Like a turtle on its back. Exactly. But just like God helped Moses, God will help you. God helps us when we're helpless. DJ, you're the best. Not only did you help me get out of this funk I was in, you just said our big idea. Big idea time! Today's big idea is God helps us when we're helpless. So on the count of three, we'll say it out loud together. You ready, Carl? Ready? One, two, three! God, God helps, helps us when we're, we're helpless! helpless. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Good job, everyone. So, Carl, how are you feeling now? You know what? I'm feeling a lot better. That's great, man. Hey, hey what you got there? Oh, it's my PB&J I was telling you about earlier. Wait, is that is that the one with the sand in it? The one with the what? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> All right, man. Kids, have a good week. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of So that Pharaoh guy, he's a bad guy. Like, he's pretty evil. Like, super evil. Like, Cruella mixed with Darth Vader watching Ohio State football kind of evil. Just, just bad. Evil. He realizes that the Hebrews were their slaves, and they're becoming too many of them. They're getting too big, too strong. So we got to do something about this so they don't rise up and revolt against us. And so throw all the babies in the Nile? Throw them all in the river? Like, that's awful. That's evil. And baby Moses, baby Momo, was just a baby, little helpless, can't do anything except cry baby. So I'm sure Moses' mother, just like probably all of the Hebrew mothers, were like, probably felt kind of like I did in that hospital room. Like, no, I feel just so helpless. What do we do? There's nothing we can do. They're just trying to do everything they can. They're trying to hide him. And so she tries to hide Moses as long as she can. Eventually, she just can't hide him anymore. Could you imagine how desperate she had to feel? Can you imagine feeling that hopeless, that helpless, that any day now, one of the soldiers is going to come in and take your baby? Like, she felt so hopeless, so helpless, that she takes her 
precious little baby, puts him in a basket, covers that basket in flex seal so it'll float, <laughs> takes it down to the river where she knows a wreck. She didn't like, you know, like, uh, what's that movie with like the cartoon version, Prince of Egypt, where it's like he like goes down and like rapids and like crocodiles. Not quite like that. That was a fun scene, but not quite like that. She puts him in the reeds where she knows the princess is going to be coming because she's hoping that the princess will see the baby and be like, oh, the baby. So she puts this baby, her baby, her precious, most amazing thing ever, baby, in this basket, puts it in the river. And all the while, the older sister, Miriam, she's like a ninja, like hiding behind things. She's like watching, like, what's going on watching the baby? What's going on with the baby? Who's going to find the baby? Make sure like, it's like a crocodile. Like she comes up. She like, comes up and punches the crocodile in the face and then runs back and hides again. Like she's protecting this baby, her baby brother. Then all of a sudden, the princess comes for her bath. She's like, what's that? That looks like a basket. Bring me the basket. What's in the basket? <gasps> it's a baby. It's so cute. Can we keep it? I want to keep it. Can we keep it? We can't keep it. Can we keep it, please? Can we keep it? Like, it's not a puppy. It's a baby. But can we keep it? She knows she can't keep it. She realizes, it even says in Exodus, where this story is found in the Bible, she says, oh, that's one of those Hebrew babies that my dad is trying to get rid of, so I can't keep this baby. And so she's like, while she's like processing all of this, like, oh, it's a baby, but I can't keep the baby, but it's a baby, but I can't keep the baby. Guess who pops out of the, the weeds? It was like over here hiding, protecting from the crocodiles, right? She's like, ta-da! It is me, the sister. And she's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go get a mom, a Hebrew mom, to help you nurse the baby. Cool, because you're keeping the baby. So I'm going to go, I'll be right back. And the princess is like, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, all right. Okay, okay, I guess. So she keeps the baby. Baby Moses, helpless baby Moses, is saved. So what's our big idea today? God helps us when we're helpless. Moses was helpless. Moses' mom was helpless. And if you know this story, you know Moses grows up and eventually sets the people free. Set my people free. No, you know, all that crazy stuff. Who else was helpless was this group of people who were God's chosen people who were slaves. God helps us when we're helpless. Here's the deal. We're pretty much always helpless. Let's just be honest. Most of us are pretty arrogant, and so we don't think we're helpless, but you are. Especially when it comes to important things in life. Like, we think we got it, but we need God's help. We need God's help. God helps us when we're helpless. So the truth we want to learn today, God helps us when we're helpless. That's the truth. That's the big idea. That is real. That is true. The question, I think, becomes, well, how? Because God's not going to put me in a basket full of flex seal and put me in a river. Maybe. That would be kind of fun. So how does God help us? I think that's the real question we got to figure out today. So here's three, and there's, like, there's a bajillion different ways God helps us, and I don't have time to get into all of them. So I tried to categorize them into like three different ways, you know, because I think sometimes we don't think that miracles still happen today, but God absolutely does. Miracles mean just the fact that God helps us is a miracle. The fact that you're alive today is a miracle. The fact that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and speaks to you is a miracle. So God does miracles, absolutely. But I think I'm going to try and frame this into three different ways that God helps me. And these are by no means gospel. These just came from my head. So I would love some dialogue and discussion on these, honestly. Like, so like if you guys are like, you're a crazy man, like, let me know that or whatever. All right, we're going to get into these. Okay, so here are the three ways I think that God helps us. Number one, God helps us with wisdom. Wisdom. Gave Moses, his mom, the wisdom to use the flex seal on the bottom. Wow, really? I know it doesn't exist. The kids always yell at me when I say this stuff. Like, yeah, flex me wasn't back then. Maybe. She gave him the wisdom to make the basket float because the basket floated, right? God gives us wisdom. I think, like, the point of the Bible that was written, God's word written for us, is so that we can know who God is. We can understand Jesus and how to have salvation. And to give us wisdom. The more we read our Bible, the more we understand who God is, the more wisdom we get. 
I think one of the huge ways that God helps us when we're helpless, which is always, is that God wants to give us, God wants to give you wisdom. The second way is God gives us direction. And I don't mean like a Google Maps. Like, wouldn't that be awesome if you just like pull up your phone and you're like Google Maps and God's like, go here. Awesome, thank you. Like, that'd be awesome, right? But I think God gives us a more general direction. Like, we have a, like a young adult group that meets on Monday nights and we get this question all the time. I don't know what God wants me. I don't know what God wants. I don't know what God wants for me. And it's usually in terms like, I don't know what major to have. I don't know what job to like pursue. And that's all important and God has a plan for that. But I think God has a much general direction for all of us that are called Jesus our Lord and Savior, that are followers of Jesus, of all the stuff we find in the Bible. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. We take that direction, the rest of it just kind of falls into place. Take that direction of being peacemakers in a world that does not like peacemakers. And then the rest of the stuff kind of falls into place. When we go crazy on loving people and going out of our way to show love to people, that's the direction God has for his people, for his followers, for us. Peacemakers, be people that go out of their way to love the Lord their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength and love their neighbor as themselves. Bam, God, bam, direction. That's how he helps us. And the last way, and these are all really connected, the last way is community. God helps us through us. Think about the, the, the very first church after Jesus, like, back up into heaven. What did they do? They literally sold everything they had just so that they could give more to each other, so they could love each other more. Anybody here done that? Sold every single thing you have just so you could give to people? No, we've not done that. How does God help us? Us. Each other. We should have such a crazy and radical love for each other that the world's like, whoa, I want a part of that. I want to be a part of that. Because when they look at us, they see us constantly helping each other and loving each other. God helps us with wisdom. He gives us direction for our life. And he has purposely set up his followers to be in community with each other. This following Jesus thing is not a thing you can do alone. I mean, you probably like, you can pray the prayer and get salvation alone, but to have a real genuine enter the kingdom of God, that's a kingdom. That's people. That's us helping each other. So as, we, as I finish today, um, some of you have never you know, made that decision to follow Jesus. You're like, I want God to help me too. That sounds awesome. I feel helpless. I need God's help. And I'm going to pray, and you can make that decision today to follow Jesus Ask him to forgive you for your sins and make a commitment to follow him. To be like, I want God's direction for my life. I want to read my Bible and I get this wisdom. And the cool part about all of this is we make a decision to follow Jesus. This miracle of the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. I don't know exactly how it works. I read a lot about it and I study a lot about it. And it's this weird, confusing thing, but it's awesome. And then he speaks to us to give us wisdom. He guides us and directs us to give us direction. Some of us here today have never made that decision. Some of us online have never made that decision. Today can be the day you make that decision. Whether you've made that decision before or not, I think every single one of us has a step we can take today. No matter how young, no matter how old, every single one of us needs to learn how to accept God's help. Maybe we need more wisdom. Maybe it is just spending more time in your Bible, spending more time with people that are followers of Jesus that are wiser than you. We all need some more wisdom. Maybe if you was direction, you just don't know what God wants for you. You don't know what direction to go with your life. Lean into God. Spend some time in prayer. Spend some quiet time where God will show you and give you that direction if you quiet your heart to listen. Maybe for some of us, like, man, I am not great at loving other people around me. I am not great at helping other people around me. But God helps us by using us. So what is it for you today? What is it? God, the Holy Spirit, is speaking to you right now if you will quiet your mind to listen and saying, this is the step for you. 
Maybe it's making that initial step to become a follower of Jesus, which is the most amazing and awesome thing you can ever do. Make a life full of love, full of purpose, full of meaning. It's difficult, but it's worth it. Or maybe it's taking a step towards one of those ways God wants to help you. But we all have a step. I'm going to pray, and then we've got one more song we're going to do after that. We're going to have our amazing Kid Crossing Music worship team come up and help us with that one as well. But first, will you guys pray with me? God, we love you. We thank you for you. We thank you that you love us enough to help us. These helpless little creatures that you created on purpose and with a purpose. We love you, Jesus. And right now, if you've never made that decision to follow Jesus, wherever you are, have a conversation in your head. We call that prayer. Have a conversation with God in your head. Say something like this. Like, God, I want you in my life. I want my life to be about you, not about me. I feel helpless and I need help. God, I admit that I have sinned. I ask you to forgive me for that. I believe you are God. I believe you love me. I believe you have the power to forgive. And I commit to follow you every day. And for those of you that have already made that decision to follow Jesus, right now, wherever you are, ask God, what's my step? What is the thing you want me to do next to gain wisdom, to gain some direction, or to gain some more community? How do I accept your help, God? We love you. We pray this all in your amazing name. Amen. around a 
So it's not a family ministry experience until Brandon forgets to do something. We got to do a recap quiz. So kids know this. At the end of our service, we do a little quiz to see how we're paying attention. Didn't know it was going to be a quiz, did you? woo -hoo! Here we go. All right, let's put the questions up here. Question number one. I'm throwing them all off, so just be, you know, I'm sorry, tech people. Question number one. According to our big idea, what does God do when we are helpless? Is it A, saves us, B, helps us, C, laughs at us, or D, if it's Tuesday, he makes tacos? All right, what's the answer? Yell it out. The answer is B, helps us. Very good. All right, question number two. What was the extra ingredient in Carl's peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Was it A, bananas, B, mayonnaise? Those of you that do that, ugh. C, sand, or D, taco seasoning? The answer is sand, C, very good. All right, question number three. Who helped save Baby Momo, baby Momo. Who helped save baby Moses? Was it A, his mom, B, his sister, C, the Egyptian princess, or D, all of the above? <laughs> Quick tip, it's always all of the above. What's the answer? D, all of the above. That's right. All right, last question. Here we go. Question number four before I turn this back over to Jack, I think. True or false? A crocodile ate baby Moses. False. You guys are good. You guys are smart. Well, thank you for joining with us today for all of our craziness. Sorry, tech people. Go ahead, Jack. Well, yeah, it has been crazy, and he did throw the tech people off, and that's awesome. Okay. I want to give the girls a hand. They did a great job. Yeah. A little bit of energy in here. We like that a lot. So um, remember, Labor Day weekend... Let's try to help somebody this week. Let's spend a little of our labor helping somebody else. Um, you guys have a great week. Next week, we're doing more of um, uh, vintage. I don't know if this was vintage or not, but it was awesome anyway. So, hey, you guys have a great week, and we'll see you next week. running hides you bring the broken back to life only you can only you can you set me free from every chain you fill my heart with songs of praise only you can only you can jesus you're the only reason that i'm even breathing i am wide awake calling every beat is calling out your name you left the glory of your throne to bring this throne away back home only you can only you can you give me love you give me life you keep me dancing through the night
Calling, every beat is calling out your name. 